Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the top five books that I read over this summer. Um, so I will kind of, this video will be split into two parts. I'll kind of go over all the books that I read for June, July, and August in their rating, and then I'll kind of talk about my top five in no specific order. So without further ado, let's get started. In June, I first read The Kitchen House by Kathleen Grissom, which I gave a four out of five stars. The Aviator's Wife by Melanie Benjamin, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And My Sister's Grave by Robert Dagoni, which I gave a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Starting with July, I first listened to the audiobook for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. Mind Platter by Najwa Zeban, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. Rapunzel's Guide to All Things Brave, Creative, and Fun, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. Finding Rebecca by Eom Dunsey, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. Once We Were Brothers by Ronald H. Balson, which I gave a 4.25 out of 5 stars. The Distant Hours by Kate Morton, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And Poison Study by Maria V. Schneider, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. So moving on to August, I first started out reading the audiobook for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Homo Dias by Yuval Noah Harari, which I gave a 2.75 out of 5 stars. Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. The Gernsery Literary and Potato Peel Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And finally, The Alice Network, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. Alrighty, so moving on to my favorite books of the summer. I first had My Sister's Grave by Robert Dagoni. So this follows a woman named Tracy who is a homicide detective and she actually ended up becoming a homicide detective because 20 years prior her sister was essentially kidnapped and they never found her body. And so during the trial she saw some things that didn't really add up so she didn't really believe that it was a fair trial and that always haunted her until the day that her sister's remains were found and that kind of leads to another thing so this was the first book in this series and I was really really blown away by this I loved it it was so suspenseful and especially at the end it had like the hairs on my arm were standing up like that's how good it was and so yeah, my only complaint was with this one that we didn't really get to, I felt a disconnect from Tracy, um, so I'm hoping in the future books I kind of get that connection with her, because usually with like these types of books, I fall, like I get really attached to these characters, um, but this book was so suspenseful, it had so many twists and turns that I didn't see coming, and it was just really a lot of fun. Next I have The Alice Network by Kate Quinn, and this was truly an amazing amazing book. It was very equivalent in my mind to The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, which is my favorite World War II historical fiction. So this kind of has a dual storyline. So it follows Charlie who steps off a boat in um, England and on who's on her way to Switzerland with her mother to get rid of her little problem. And so while she's there, she um, has this note, and like this name and address scribbled on a piece of paper. So she ends up making a run for it and falls up on the steps of E who has some connection with her cousin Rose who's gone missing uh, during World War II and so Eve is very reluctant to help Charlie find her cousin until she hears a name that she hasn't heard in 30 years and that kind of leads them on this kind of wild mystery and adventure and so while this is also going on there's also a dual storyline to Eve 30 years prior during World War I when she was a spy in Nazi or er, in Germany um, are in German occupied France and it kind of goes on from there but I fell in love with this book and the characters and I loved how the author was seamlessly able to weave in the storylines and kind of make them parallel but um, everything left on a cliffhanger and it made me very eager to read and what was really unique this book is just over 500 pages but it reads very very quickly and I'd read for a bit I'd look up and be like wow I just read 60 pages and so like I was really attached to this book I loved seeing the relationship between Charlie and Eve kind of blossom and grow over the course of the book and so I highly recommend this book it was honestly truly amazing and I could not put it down it like I really want to reread it again actually that's how much I liked it 
Next, I have the Grocery, Literary, and Potato Peel Society, um, which I wasn't really, I was really excited for this actually because I saw that it was being turned into a movie with a lot of the people that are from Downton Abbey, and it's now on Netflix now, um, which I have yet to watch, but that's kind of my plan for this weekend. So it's about a girl named Juliet who during the war would write kind of these little fun books that were for like comic relief during the war, and so after that she's kind of wanting to work on something with more meaning and that has a greater impact and so she kind of stumbles across the Grocery, Literary, and Potato Peel Society and that kind of sparks her interest and the book takes off from there. But what I thought was really unique about this book is that it's told in told strictly in letters um, which in the beginning it did take a while because you're trying to figure out who's whose but once you figure out who these characters are like it reads really quickly. I loved the banter that you could get in here and how it told a story in that way. Um, so I really liked it. It was a really unique twist to something like a genre that I really enjoy and it was it was just a lot of fun so I cannot wait to pick up the movie like to watch the movie and kind of see about that but this one was a lot of fun and it was a very very quick read. So next, this is one of the books that I was probably most excited about coming out this year, and it is A Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson, and this is the kind of spin-off series to The Revenant Chronicles, which is probably one of my favorite uh, YA fantasy series. Um, so it follows, it takes place six years after the events of the last book in The Revenant Chronicles uh, took place, and it follows Kazzy, who is part of the Queen's Guard, and she and like a couple of the members there are sent out on a task to like basically f solve a mystery that was kind of left unanswered in the first one and so that leads her crossing paths with Jace going on from there. I'm trying to be vague because it does play off of the first series and I don't want to give any spoilers in that away um, but yeah this book was like amazing. I fell in love with it from the beginning. I loved seeing the relationship between Cassie and Jace kind of evolve and change and it ended on such a cliffhanger that I was like holy smokes like I cannot wait for the next book to come out. It was just so good. Um, it was just really good. It's told from like Cassie and Jace's perspective but it was done so also seamlessly as well where I didn't feel like um, one side was worse or like slower than the other it was it flowed really well so I highly recommend you check the Remnant Chronicles out and then pick this one up because it is just amazing and we get also get to see some of the characters from the first trilogy as well so that is always a plus and lastly I finally have the Distant Hours by Kate Morton and this was the Tales and Teacups book club pick um, from later this or over the summer and so this is the last Kate Morton book that I needed to read before her new one comes out in October. So this one follows a woman who um, who's at her parents house and her mother gets delivered a letter from the 1940s and that seems to really upset her. So she's trying to understand how this letter that was 50 years delivered 50 years later could have such an impact on her mother and so that kind of leads her to stumbling across these sisters who live in this castle and how they kind of took their mother in during World War II when the children were evacuated um, during like the bombing, um, the blitz. And so this kind of, she finds out that there was this murder that took place, a falling out between her mother and the sisters and all this stuff. And it kind of, she's kind of uncovering the stuff, like the history that gets lost in the distant hours. And so this one was a lot of fun. Um, this wasn't my favorite Kate Morton book, but it was still really good. She's a very atmospheric writer. And so I could really picture the kind of the estate that the sisters lived on. I could picture the castle before and after the war and how like each character and each sister was so unique and I really like that. Um, there's like a with Kate Morton's book there's usually like a mystery aspect to it and you're trying to figure out something with the characters and but that's what I really enjoy too because you're not told what happened you're kind of discovering it with the characters themselves which is I think the way to go um, but yeah this one was just really atmospheric so I, I recommend if you're 
thinking to get into Kate Moore and start with this one or the house at Riverton and then move on to her kind of more popular ones but this one was still really good I loved it and it was just a lot of fun so that's it guys thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what your favorite books were of this summer so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time bye guys